Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. Can you believe it's already December? Was this a fast year or a slow year? Oh, for me it was a fast year. I can't believe that we're all ready to Christmas. I feel like it was just Christmas. Maybe it was a slow year for you, but one of the things that I love about Christmas time, that I love about the month of December, is the sun goes down really early, right? It's getting dark outside. And maybe there's the Christmas lights turned on and there's that special magical feeling, right? Isn't it so cozy? Maybe there's music playing in the background. Maybe an adult lights some candles. Maybe there's special decorations up in your house. But all of it is a special time. It makes it feel magical. It makes it feel extra special because what do we celebrate at Christmas? Who is the greatest gift of all? Jesus. Oh, we get to celebrate Jesus. And so this time as we enter the month of December leading up to Christmas is a period that we call Advent. Now, what does Advent mean? Well, if I am a Seventh-day Adventist, shoot, the word Advent is, is in my denomination name. And so if we look at that name, Seventh-day, that means I go to church on Saturday. I keep that day as my Sabbath. Adventist means I am looking forward to when Jesus comes again. Advent means Jesus coming, returning. And we know that Jesus is going to come again someday. But during the month of December, we celebrate the first Advent. The first Advent, we celebrate when Jesus came the first time as a baby to be our friend, our Savior, our Redeemer. Because he loves us so much. And so every day in the month of December, we're going to look at different gifts that Jesus gives us. And how Jesus is the best gift of all and every day through our Advent study, we are celebrating Jesus coming that first time. And then we know we can also celebrate that Jesus is going to come again a second time as well. So we're going to be going through a Better Than Anything Christmas written by Barbara Riach. And we're going to just every day look at the different gifts that Jesus' life gives us. Have you thought about all the gifts that Jesus gives us? They are better than any gift that is maybe on your Christmas list. Have you made a Christmas list? Well, we're going to see every day a different gift that Jesus gives us, and they're the best gifts of all. So grab your Bible. We're going to be in our Bibles every single day. We're going to read today in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, as we explore the Christmas story. So where is the book of Luke in our Bibles? Okay, well, we are going to use the New Testament. And so if I open my Bible to about the middle, well, I didn't hit it that time. Usually you end up around Psalms. I hit Ecclesiastes, so I'm a little bit in front of Psalms. But if you open your Bible to the middle and then start flipping forward, flip forward past Isaiah and Jeremiah, past Ezekiel and Daniel and Habakkuk, and Zechariah, Malachi, then I see the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And if you get to John, you've gone too far. We want Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are the four Gospels. Each of those books tells us the story of Jesus. So we're going to be in a bunch of different books looking at all the gifts that Jesus gives us. But to start, we're going to look at the angel appearing to Mary. So Luke chapter one. So big number one, chapter one. And then use your finger to find little number 26. Little number 26, verse 26. And we're going to read about Mary. So pause the video if you need more time to find it in your Bible. But when you're ready, this is Luke one, verse 26. It says, during Elizabeth's six months of pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin who lived in Nazareth, a town in Galilee. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, greetings. The Lord has blessed you and is with you. But Mary was very confused by what the angel said. Mary wondered, what does this mean? The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, because God is pleased with you. Listen, you will become pregnant 
You will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and people will call him the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I am a virgin. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will cover you. The baby will be holy. He will be called the son of God. Now listen, Elizabeth, your relative is very old, but she is also pregnant with a son. Everybody thought she could not have a baby, but she has been pregnant for six months. God can do everything. Mary said, I am the servant girl of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. Then the angel went away. Wow, so much just happened. Maybe close your eyes. Can you picture it? Can you picture what might have been? Let's look here at our first few verses. What words are used to tell us about Mary? What do we see here? Well, it describes her as a virgin. That means at that time she wasn't married. She wasn't married, right? It said here that she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. They live, where do they live? In Nazareth. They live in Nazareth. We know that her name was Mary. What does the angel first say? Greetings. The Lord has blessed you and is with you. Did you know that the same is true for you today? The Lord has blessed you and is with you. God is always with you. He has blessed you and he is with you. But what, what else do we see here about Mary? She was confused. Is it okay to be confused? It says here that she wondered, what does this mean? Is it all right to ask questions to maybe not understand everything? Absolutely. Absolutely. But then listen to what the angel says. Don't be afraid. Right? That's another message for us. We don't need to be afraid. Why? Because God is pleased with you, the angel says Mary to Mary. God is pleased with you. We don't have to be afraid. Sometimes I used to be afraid of God. I used to be afraid of God because I didn't know him. He was like this God maybe sitting on a throne in heaven watching to see, did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? Like maybe even during Christmas time, do we maybe think about that, that Santa Claus song where he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. I sometimes thought about God that way. I sometimes thought that God was looking to see if I was being bad or good. But no, we're just gonna, we're gonna see here in who Jesus is. We get a picture of who God is. And what do we see here? The Lord has blessed you and is with you. Don't be afraid. Why? God is pleased with you. God is pleased with you. And so we see that Mary's fears are taken away because then the angel tells Mary, some promises, some promises. She goes, Gabriel says in verse 31, you will become pregnant. You will give birth to a son and name him Jesus. And he's going to be great. He will be on a throne. He will be the son of the most high. He will rule and his kingdom will never end. But Mary is still confused, isn't she? Mary is still confused because she goes, how did this happen? I'm a virgin. I'm not married yet. I haven't married Joseph. I don't know. And then what does the angel say? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will cover you. The baby will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What a special baby. Think about these promises. These promises here. What is a promise? you ever thought about that? Have you ever made a promise? Or maybe a friend has made a promise to you or a family member. Maybe you go, I promise, I promise you won't tell anyone. Maybe you're sharing secrets or maybe you're, you did something and you don't want to get caught. I promise, don't tell anyone. What does it mean to have a promise? Are you always able to keep your promises? Have you maybe had someone break a promise? Maybe you shared something with a friend that you wanted to be a secret. You said, promise, 
but they didn't. They broke that promise. How did that make you feel? Have you ever broken a promise? How did that feel? As humans, it's hard sometimes for us to keep promises, but nothing will stop God from keeping his promises. God keeps his promises. Jesus came to give us something better, to be the best promise of all. Mary had all those questions, right? She was confused. How can I be a mother? Why would God choose someone like me? And the angel says, God can do everything. That was verse 37. God can do everything. God keeps his promises. Whatever God promises will happen. And we don't have to see it to believe it, right? We see the promises in the Bible and we know we can believe that God keeps those promises. Did God keep those promises to Mary? Yeah, she became pregnant. Jesus was born as the son of God. And through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we know that we are saved by those promises. In 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, there is an amazing verse that says, No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promises. And so this Christmas season, Christmas says that Jesus came so that all of God's promises come true. So let's reflect on a few questions. I've also added these questions into the video description below so you can think about them. So here's our first question. Why is God's promise of Jesus a better than ever promise, the best ever promise? Why is God's promise of Jesus the best promise? What do you think? In Jesus, everything comes true. All of God's promises are a yes in Jesus. So what do God's promises mean for your life? What do God's promises mean for your life? And to go along with that, where do we find God's promises? Do we find God's promises in the Bible when we read them together? Maybe we, we find God's promises in the worship songs that we sing, maybe the different Christmas songs this time of year. Does God keep those promises? Can we look through those promises just like the ones the angel gave to Mary and take those to heart where we go, God, you are with me. You have blessed me. You have found favor in me. You say that I am loved that I am good and I am special. God keeps those promises that are in his word. And so today, the gift of Jesus and the gift that Jesus then gives us is that Jesus is God's best ever promise. The best ever promise. Let's say a prayer together to close up. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that you are the best ever promise. The promises that were made to Mary so long ago still ring true today. You are our Savior, our friend, our Redeemer. You love us, and we thank you for that love. In your name, amen. All right, every day today, every day of this Advent series, actually, we're going to make a paper chain. And on this paper chain, we're going to write our takeaway. So here was our takeaway for today, for December 1. Jesus is God's best ever promise. God's best ever promise. Now on the back, you could decorate this if you wanted to. You could decorate the angel, maybe draw a scene, the angel coming to Mary. You could instead write your own prayer. Whatever you wanted, you could leave it blank. But on it, we're going to write, Jesus is God's best ever promise. And then I'm going to make it into my paper chain. I'm going to loop it around and I'm going to staple it. And every day we're going to add every part of our Advent, all of the gifts that Jesus is to us. And today, what did we see? That he is the best ever promise. Have a great rest of your day remembering all that Jesus is for us. God keeps his promises to us in Jesus because in Jesus they are a yes. And I will see you tomorrow.